To be a good competitive player takes more than just jumping on an online ladder and being able to play a good game. You actually have to have skills in team building, using online tools like Smogon, Picalytics, and Showdown to perfect the concept of your team. But one of the most time consuming parts, the parts of the process Game Freak has taken leaps and bounds to shorten, is building the team in game. That begs the question which game is the hardest to build teams in? And I personally believe that it is Pokemon Emerald for the Game Boy Advance. Why not any of the Gen 1 or Gen 2 games? Well, the answer to that is quite simple those games are broken. Generations 1 and 2 tend to be the easiest games to break open for various glitches to make the team building process much simpler, with item duplication being the main useful glitch. As the first games in the franchise, they also have less variables to worry about in the team building process. With a lack of abilities, natures, items, and a max of 15 DVs influencing the Pokemon stat gross, and it's much easier to come up with a thoroughly competitive team quickly back in Generation 1 and 2. But in Generation 3, everything about building a Pokemon team changed. Abilities were the big introduction, creating niches for Pokemon based on more than just type, stat spread and move coverage. Natures are new too, adding more variables to the uniqueness of every individual Pokemon. EVs, which did exist in Generation 1, were completely overhauled, no longer being able to be maxed out for each stat, and instead have a cap of 510 to be distributed, making it so the player could only max out two of the Pokemon stats instead of all four. IVs had a wider range, capping out at 31 for perfect max stat growth. Items and berries were also massively overhauled, creating more viable options for held items that weren't just leftovers. Indeed, in comparison to the gens that came prior, Generation 3 is where Pokemon team creation took on the modern flavor that has stuck with the franchise ever since. But the foundation of many competitive Pokemon's beginnings, breeding, wasn't quite up to snuff. In the modern era, through the use of Destiny Knot, it can be quite simple to breed for certain IVs, like Perfect 31s or Zeros. In Scarlet and Violet, many players only breed for Zeros, as any other imperfect IV can be bottle capped by a Bomba Snowman. However, back in Generation 3, children had a 53.01% chance to inherit three random IVs from the parent with no player influence. Even Nature started off rough with no way to influence inheritance until Emerald, where females have a 50% chance of passing on their nature when holding the Everstone. As such, most players forewent breeding for perfect IVs, because most of the time they had to breed for other factors instead. For instance, breeding for the correct hidden power could take some time, as hidden powers attack power and type were determined by Pokemon IVs. Hidden power is quite a popular move, covering up many Pokemon's lack of good stab or adding the perfect coverage, with breeding for the correct nature and sometimes ability already adding layers of stress to the egg hatching process, many players would call it quits once they got the right type. Egg moves were not as complicated, with players just having to check for breeding compatibility and making sure they found a male Pokemon to pass down that egg move. As it was, players would only bother breeding for those two instances, influencing Hidden Power's type or inheriting egg moves from a male Pokemon. Natures were less of an issue, being able to be manipulated through a synchronized lead in the wild, and with the lack of hidden abilities, any further messing around with breeding was pretty much worthless and a time waste. But as we all know, breeding is just the beginning. Effort values, or EVs, are the second way that Pokemon stats are influenced, and this feature was fundamentally overhauled compared to Gens 1 and 2. In the Emerald, many players choose to grind their EVs manually, which alone can be arduous. With money harder to come by, buying bulk lots of vitamins for 9,800 Pokedollars isn't in everyone's pocketbook, meaning you have to knock out many Pokemon manually. Which, fortunately for the player base, Game Freak thoughtfully created the item Macho Brace, which doubles the amount of EVs gained. Surely that's helpful. However, you only earn EVs when you gain experience, and with the EXP share also wanting a held item slot, the choice between the two speeds down the process significantly. Don't worry, 
Pokeros, a rare event rarer than finding a shiny, also speeds up the process, but is a factor most players can't rely on. Once the player has maxed out their EVs, they have to continue knocking out Pokemon to gain levels, and this part alone can take some time, as post-game running through the Elite Four and waiting for Pokenav calls from gym leaders are the most effective ways players have found to grind levels in Emerald. The level grind is a part that many modern games have fixed, giving Pokemon a standard level of 50 in many modes of competition and creating various candies to expedite the EXP grade. However, all the way back in Emerald, team levels are where you left them, and the only candy that there was was rare candy, which you could theoretically grind for if you had a full team of level 81 Linoons with pickup. But those tasks are pretty standard for getting a competitive Pokemon. Apart from small improvements from game to game, catching or breeding for the Pokemon, then EV training them is relatively the same through all subsequent generations. Which begs the question, why did I choose Emerald to be the hardest game to train competitive Pokemon in? Why not Ruby or Sapphire, or anything from the DS library? And it has to do with the post-game area that many people want to return, the Battle Frontier. In the Battle Frontier, players can go through any of the various battle facilities to gain battle points, which then in turn can be spent on special vendors and tutors in the area to gain access to fabulously competitive moves and items. And that sounds all good in theory, until you actually try to grind for the 100 plus battle points you need to kit out your whole team, and then get one or two points for completing a round. That's all okay you think, cause it wasn't that hard. Did you know that the longer you win in a certain area, the tougher the Pokemon get? Like, competitively tough, with better IVs, EVs, and items. You know, the things you just spent hours on to complete yourself. Yeah, it, it, it takes a long time. Needless to say, some of the facilities are easier to battle on, and once you gain three silver medals, the process to get battle points can speed up with a gambler in the house south of the pyramid able to increase your gains even more, but this part by far is the most difficult part of training a team in Emerald. Many facilities you cannot autopilot like your E4 runs, and without those battle points, you lose out on valuable moves like Sword Stance, the Elemental Punches, and Rock Slide, and lose out on items such as Choice Man and Leftovers. Many of these items cannot be purchased elsewhere, or are one of items from the game, meaning if you want a full team of competitive Pokemon, you'll have to grind through double battles because they give you one more battle point, and through easier facilities like Battle Factory or Battle Dome. And this single area alone, is why I believe Pokemon Emerald is the hardest game to train a competitive Pokemon team on. 